Thank you for listening to the North Star Narrative, a podcast by North Star Academy. I hope you're encouraged, challenged, and motivated by what you learned today. Enjoy the story. Welcome to the show. I'm so excited today. I've got two very special guests. One of them who's been on the podcast before, our very own chaplain, Mr. Alan Hester. He's actually here to guest host today. And so we don't have any of this planned. We're just going to roll with it and see what happens. But we're here to introduce you to Zach Diesler. Zach Hi. is incredible. He um, is going to be leading our next spiritual emphasis event here at North Star in March. And so we are so excited to just introduce him to you today. He is so fun to introduce because he's got so many things that he loves and been a part of and is doing now. The main thing, Jesus, he truly loves Jesus and everything he does is because the Holy Spirit shares with him to do that. He is a listener of the Holy Spirit. He has been a children's pastor, youth pastor, and now a head pastor. He has been a chaplain and a Bible teacher, foster parents, and has adopted his son. Um, his dream is to open a recovery center for people struggling with poverty and addiction alongside with his wife. And so I know he's going to talk a little bit more about some of the things he's done. Um, he loves theater and has done a lot with that. And so we're just so excited that you're here with us now, Zach, and that you're coming back for C. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you. No, I just, this school is such a blessing to me. I've only known you guys for a little bit, but every interaction I've had has been just truly marked by the Holy Spirit. And I think what your school does is just incredible. So the more I learn, the more excited I get about being a very small part of what you guys are doing and what God is doing with you. Oh, he's doing amazing things. And Mr. Yeah. Hester has been a huge addition to that. Uh, Mr. Hester, what do you think so far about your experience at North Star and what are you doing with the students? North Star has been so much fun. And some days I feel guilty because it's just so much fun. Is this really work? Because I love it so much, uh, but it's been a fantastic experience to be part of North Star and to get to know our families, our students, um, our faculty and staff has just been wonderful. We we have a great community here. And that's one of the things that I would say has been the biggest blessing is to just recognize the power of that and the power of God at work among a people who love God and love one another. And so it's been it's been phenomenal to be part of North Star this year. And and yeah, just appreciate every opportunity that we have, including this one today to talk with Zach. Yeah. And Alan's so fun. He loves to have fun. So a great addition. And so I, I started out by introducing Zach, but Mr. Hester, you know, um, Zach a little bit better than me. So is there anything else you would say to introduce him? Yeah, I would just say that Zach and I have known each other for about five years now. Um, I met Zach when I first moved out to California and we were actually working in the same school at that time. And I got to know him and a friendship developed. And as we began to pray as a leadership team about our C event for the spring of 22, um, the Lord put him on my heart. And, and so I'm super excited because I know he is uniquely equipped and gifted for, for this specific uh, season of ministry that we're going to have together. And so Zach is a lot of fun. He's a musician. He's a worship leader. He is um, a phenomenal teacher and speaker. Um, he does, he's so good with, with, with people. Um, I would say that's one of his strongest gifts is just being able to talk with people, being able to encourage them through the word and through prayer and through uh, just times of ministry. And so I think for all of our students and our parents and faculty and staff, you're going to love getting to know Zach today and, and going to enjoy his presence. He's a really unique guy with a lot of cool stuff um, that are just kind of like interesting about him. Things like, you know, his his diet or his connection to theater or all these things. <laughs> so Zach, I'll let you share whatever you want to share in terms of just introducing yourself with some of those kind of fun trivia bits. Well, thank you. Thank you. And honestly, I just, I have to say, I just, I love this man so much. He's just been such a good brother to me and in Christ, I, I need him in my life and I'm so grateful for him. So it's just a, it's a mutual blessing. So we have a lot of fun and we do get to eat together. Um, but when we do eat together, <laughs> we do, we do eat different things <laughs> at, the, at the same restaurants. I am mostly vegan. That is, that is the diet that, that my wife and I started about four years ago. And so, but, but I say mostly because we still eat fish a lot. And then every once in a while, you just have to have a pepperoni pizza. I just believe that that's just part <laughs> of life. So, that's, so occasionally, you know, we will, we will cheat, but it's not really cheating because no one's told us that we have to do this. It's just, this is just what we do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but we do have a lot of fun. What's your favorite thing to eat? 
right now uh, there's this place called vegan mob and it's uh it's in oakland and they make this thing called soul rolls and it's um candied yams and they call it smackaroni <laughs> it's uh it's macaroni and cheese but they put something else in there as well um and then they put it in this um in this kind of like deep fried um dough and it's just it's wow. it's like <laughs> it feels like heaven it feels like a, a little slice of like maybe we'll be eating this <laughs> <laughs> the marriage supper <laughs> will be on the buffet yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly exactly i mean it's it's just i i can't eat enough of them yeah it's so good wow. Well, you've got lots of fun facts about you that you um, shared with us. I don't even know which one to start with because they're all a lot of fun. Um, what about this? You, your first job out of college was playing Jerry the Nerd in Nightmare on Puberty Street. Tell yeah. us about that. Yeah. Nightmare on Puberty Street is kind of a little bit of a dated title for kids who are growing up now, but you might remember the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. And so Kaiser Permanente actually cared about their community so much that they started to create these shows that would go to each individual school. So elementary school, middle school, high school, and the middle school show was, was called Nightmare on Puberty Street. And there was uh, two guys and two girls in the show, and we all had different issues. And so the idea was to have like to be able to show the entire gamut of what goes on in middle school and each character had their own thing. And so my thing was, I was a nerd. Um, it actually kind of ties in with what we're going to talk about today too, a little bit, but I, I was finding my identity in being a nerd. Um, but I also, I didn't feel accepted, um, by anybody. And I started to kind of close off and just play video games and, um, and it was just a really difficult time for Jerry. And then you see his process kind of, um, go through and actually he, at the end of the show, he um, gets kissed on the cheek by the popular girl, and and uh, and it's a really it's a beautiful show about you know becoming who you are. And then afterwards, we get to interact with the students, and they get to ask questions about anything, and that was really fun, especially in a in a gym full of a thousand middle schoolers um, <laughs> handling questions and going back and forth. Um, by the end of it, there was nothing we hadn't heard, and nothing we couldn't answer, and we had a lot of fun, but also some meaningful one-on-one -on -one times after that, um, where it actually it led me into ministry, the whole job actually, because I loved the one-on-one -on -one interactions and I wanted to give them the gospel, but I worked for a Kaiser Permanente and they, they wouldn't allow that. Um, so I was like, man, God, I want to do this one day with, with students where I can share the fullness of who they are in Christ. And so, yeah, it was a fun show. I did it for five years and then I transitioned into ministry from there. So following that uh, line of thought with your background in theater, yeah. I know you have been in theater as an actor, you've been in theater as a director, and you filled quite a number of roles. What's been one of like your favorite theater moments in your life? Oh, man, that's a good question. Um, there's been a couple, um, but I think probably my most, I mean, it, it's amazing to be a director. Like I never directed until I, I got to be older. And I actually didn't think theater was going to come back into my life until, until I started working at the school at Contra Costa Christian. And they, my second year, they asked uh, me to step in as the drama teacher. Um, and so to direct for the first time then, and then to watch these, these kids just like develop these characters and then have these moments on stage where they were really, the best moment in acting is when you're truthfully living in imaginary circumstances. So you are bringing a truth, even though you're, you're not that actual person, but you're bringing a real truth and it comes through because you start to feel it. And then the audience feels it and nothing like me being on stage actually prepared me for what it felt like to be in the audience, watching these kids do amazing work and seeing the tears fall from uh, adults eyes. And, and, uh, and it's just, yeah. So that was incredibly rewarding. Awesome. Yeah. I love that. I love your heart for Jesus yeah. and students and just seeing the impact um, you've made, I know, on many, many people. Um, and you Bless love movies. So I moving do. from theater to movies. I love movies. Um, tell us some of your favorite movies, What's your, it's very hard. I don't, don't ask me my favorite. I know it's, <laughs> is, it's is really it hard. hard to pick a favorite. It's so hard because it's kind of like what genre, you know, what kind of mood you're in. Um, but I will say um, that Casablanca is my favorite film. Um, and it, it truly is because I think it just hits everything. First of all, it's a black and white, which is my favorite um, style. Um, I just love the, the clean, the clean, uh, the cleanliness of black and white, but just like the shadows and just all the things you can do with it is just really beautiful to me. 
Um, the story of Casablanca, if anyone hasn't seen it, is just so it's so good because it doesn't end the way you think it's going to end. Um, there's so much morality that's that's tied in within it. Um, it's so funny. It's still funny. I think it's still funny today. I think all the jokes are still as good. Um, the romance is really good. Um, the intrigue, it's World War II. Um, it's just got it's I, I feel like it's got everything. It's got everything that you want and you can see it with your whole family. Um, you know, it's not something that is inappropriate as well, which is also a big deal, a big deal for me, especially, you know, as I became more and more, um, you know, deep into my faith, I, I wanted to find films that really I could show to everybody. And so, um, not everybody loves it. It's black and white, you know, it's, it's one of those movies that like some people are like, ah, it's too old, but, um, but when you give it a chance, I think, uh, I think you see something really special there. That's fun. What about your favorite, more modern movie? Maybe that's something that's come out in the last year. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite films is actually Arrival. Um, Arrival is a movie that maybe not a lot of people might know, but it did. It was a big movie. Uh, Amy Adams is in it. Um, Jeremy Renner, the guy who played Hawkeye from the Avenger films. Um, and it's uh, it's directed by Denis Villeneuve, I think is his name. He just did Dune, um, which came out recently. Um, he's probably my favorite director right now. And Arrival, I think, uh, has such a beautiful parable for what it's like to know the mind of God because it, it, it bends time and it does some amazing things. Um, it, it's basically about aliens coming to earth with a message um, that they're trying to get to, to the people of earth and the way that the people of earth sort of are, are hostile to it. And then there's other people who are trying to communicate um, Amy Adams character in, in particular. It's just a beautiful film. So deep. Like I could watch, I've watched it probably seven, eight times. I started showing it in my classes for apologetics because I think it really actually uh, has a great parable for, um, for Christianity, but yeah. So I highly recommend arrival. Um, I was just going to say, Zach, uh, I see in your background that you, while in college studied abroad yeah. and you know, North star is a global school. So we have students and families literally all over the world. Um, knowing that you have a little bit of background in living outside your home culture, what's one thing you learned or experienced that was, was just kind of cool um, as part of that studying abroad experience for you. Yeah, uh, I got to live in London for six months, which was such a gift. Um, and just, I think it was the the global perspective, um, getting out of the idea that that America, I mean, I, I just, growing up in America, I did, I became pretty ethnocentric in that sense. And so everything was filtered through that, that lens, which makes sense, you know, because it's where you grew up. But then to see us, from a different perspective. I moved there um, during the uh, election of Bush and Gore um, and like the whole like situation. So seeing, seeing how they viewed our politics, seeing how they viewed like how we do things, it was such an eye-opening experience. Um, and then just the, the history of, of that place in particular, just, you know, in America, you're like, this place is 50 years old, you know? And people are like, yeah, this is like... <laughs> 500 years old like it's it's a whole different world be like oh yeah 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 this has been here for a really long time um and then i love the the beauty of south africa um the culture there um i got to be there for a, a whole summer and just the just the culture was just so beautiful um the way that people interacted with each other um the different things that they not just that they ate but that they uh, that they did and the, the festivals that they had and um was just it, it was beautiful. It was a beautiful experience. And uh, I want to do more of it. I've been able to, to travel a little bit more um, to other countries, to Israel and to other places like that, but I want to do even more. That's awesome. And um, I love that you have that international experience because at North Star, we've got schools. I mean, we have students all over the world yeah. and um, yeah, Mr. Hester has been doing some incredible work with some of our TCKs, um, third culture kids. And um, so just excited to see where that's going to go. And I know um, TCKs and, you know, just many students are asking questions. Um, you know, who am I? Um, where do I fit? Um, and I know these last couple of years have been really hard um, for a lot of people. So we're so excited that the C theme will be i'll let alan sorry mr hester <laughs> i'll let mr hester announce our theme um and we're just really really excited about it yeah we are super excited to announce our theme for c 2022 as who are you 
finding your identity in Jesus. And so we're going to be focusing in on that question that's being asked by a lot of people. And as you said, Stephanie, especially I think during during all that's been going on in the world with the pandemic and lockdowns and shutdowns and all of these various things that are happening, um, I think people are asking this question um, as they have always been, I guess, but maybe it feels a little more intense right now on that, um, who am I and how do I determine that and and what does that mean? <laughs> what, what's the result of finding the answer to that question? So, so when I when I shared with Zach sort of the general direction that we were looking to to focus on, um, Zach, you 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 kind of perked up and you said, "Oh, I, that sounds interesting to me. I'd love to love to talk a little bit about that. Maybe I can ask you what was it about that theme in particular that sort of struck a chord with you or caused you to um, feel a little excitement about about sharing on that particular topic." Yeah, I feel like it's been a question that I've had since I was a young kid. It's probably one of the first deep questions I think I remember having was just, who am I? Like, and why? Like, why am I here? Like, what is, what's the purpose of me being here? Because I could see some purposes that people were living and I could see how things were going for others. But a lot of it seemed to be based upon circumstances or based upon like, oh, you get this opportunity and then that becomes who you are. You get this job that becomes who you are. You you live in this place that becomes who you are, but then those things change. And so like, for me, like there were so many things that were changing. It's probably why I've done so many different things in my life too. If sort of coming to that realization, just as we're talking right now is because I realized that like the things that I did was not me. It wasn't fully me. Um, I was in those things and I was doing those things, but but my real core identity was something bigger. I knew it was deeper than that. So when I thought about the theme and I thought about what we were talking about, I remember being a student, I remember being young and really wrestling with these core questions of what am I doing here? What does God want me to do? Like, why am I, why have I been created the way I am with the family that I have, the, the place that I live, the, the gifts that he's given me? And then also, which is pretty hard is the weaknesses, <laughs> you know, the things that I'm like, I'm not so good at. And why, like, why am I made this way and not, and, and it's so hard because when you're young, but even now I still struggle with comparison. still struggle with me looking like, oh, I don't, I'm not exactly like that. or I'm not exactly like that. And really trying to come to grips with it. And I think I've gotten to a, a much better place now than I was when I was young of really embracing the fact that I am God's child, that I'm created in his image that yes, I've got a lot of brokenness within me, a lot of weakness, a lot of sin, but that God loves me in my sin. And he loves me too much to let me stay there. And he's called me to something deeper and greater. And he's going to use, and this is what's been so incredible, is that he's been able to use my brokenness to help other people heal. Um, and so even the things that I hated about myself, he's actually said, no, 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 I've created you in a very unique and special way. And I just wish that I had more of that when I was young. And so honestly, when this theme kind of came about and we started going through it, I was like, wow, to be able to have the opportunity to give a little bit of what I've learned and what I've discovered in my journey, to be able to give that to students and be able to have them maybe have a, a smoother journey, you know, to, to knowing who they are, um, that's a gift. That's a, a true gift and opportunity. And, and I don't take it lightly. That's good. And Mr. Hester and Zach, y'all can both answer, but I'm just thinking for students that might be listening, what type of students are welcome to come to see? Is it just for students that already believe in Jesus? Oh, is that for me? <laughs> either way, we can either, either one take it. I would just say in general, I believe there is something for everyone at sea. I believe that there, no matter what your background is, no matter what your current situation is, whether you feel like you sort of have things figured out or you feel like things are totally chaotic in your mind, I think that God can use this event to, to impart truth to your mind and your heart. And so I would say that that is, C is open to everybody, to parents and their kids, to all, all of our North Star community. We want you to come because I think there's something that, um, that could be special for you in the midst of that. Zach, do you want to add to that or anything you want to share? Yeah, I'd say that this, that this question of who we are, you know, is so, is so universal. Uh, I can't think of anybody who it wouldn't be applicable for, you know, to, for those who truly know who they are, I believe it'll be a time of encouragement to really solidify those, that identity. And for those who are struggling, uh, whether they're a Christian or not, you know, to know why they're here, you know, cause it really, we're going to go from that core and we're going to build upon that is why were we created? 
you know, what, what are we doing here? Why are we here in this life in 2022, um, you know, all over the world, but in this time period, why are we here? Because God says that he has appointed every single person, like where they're going to live, um, the places that they're going to be, um, you know, and the time they're going to live in. And there's a reason for it. And I think that finding your purpose and your identity, I don't know if there's a bigger question to answer and, and, uh, and, a, and a better thing to wrestle with where, wherever you are in your faith journey. Yeah. Our students can have opportunities to ask questions. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, no, we will. We will actually have a dedicated time for that. Um, and, uh, and I'll be making myself available as well. Um, you know, with working with Mr. Hester to, to find when, when would be appropriate if there needs to be more time. Um, but I, I I'd like to be available as much as possible. I, I don't want any student to walk away feeling that they didn't get um, their question answered, even if it's not in the full uh, session together because of time or anything like that. Um, we'll make sure that everyone's question is, is answered. Yeah. Cause we re really want to spend some time this week of C just wrestling through things that are in our hearts and minds and we want to be a family that does that together and make it a safe place. Like there's no question that is um, not something that can be asked. Um, maybe not in the whole big setting, but you know, we really want to sit down and you're not going to surprise us. You're not going to shock us, right? With any, anything, any questions you have, anything you're thinking of. So we want North Star Academy and this week of C to be a place where you feel safe and you can come and you can ask any question and know that question is okay. We want you to question. We want you to seek out the truth because we believe there is firm evidence uh, that we have a God, we have a creator and um, he is real and he does have a purpose for you. So we know we want you to investigate because we know what you're going to find when you do. Right, Mr. Amen. Hester? Yeah, absolutely. 100%. And, and I love that you're saying that because we don't want to be a place where our students aren't thinking, discovering, and searching, because that's part of the process of growth. So just as you said, absolutely. Um, we, we welcome everyone to come and just be yourself, and let's talk through these things and, and open our heart to, to really discover who we really are. I say, I say be yourself, but uh, to discover maybe who God has made you to be and to find his yeah. truth in the midst of that mm -hmm. would be a better way to say it. Uh, Zach, it actually makes me think about, you know, some of the listeners that may be um, with us today uh, may not be North Star students or faculty. They may not going, may not be able to be part of C because our, our North Star narrative plays on a lot of different, uh, a lot of different locations, Spotify, Apple Music, many places. Um, maybe I could ask you this question in line with that um, for our listeners. So as you have been going through this process of discovering and finding your identity in Jesus, how has that been a game changer for you personally? What has, hmm. what has, what impact has this made on you? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's made the gospel real to me. Um, the gospel being that Jesus loves us so much that he dies for us. And then he rises again to give us eternal life with him. Um, he dies for us as we are. I think that the scripture that has just been so just just going over and over and over in my heart is Romans 5 8 that God demonstrates this love towards us that while we were sinners Christ died for us and I used to read that verse and think oh yeah when when we sinned then he died for us but it, it has a present feeling to it it's it's the fact that he knows that we're going to continue to sin and he knows that we're going to sin even after we become followers of Christ and yet he's dying for all of that. Like that's that he's died for it for it all, which is so incredible to me because I don't deserve it. I think the, the older I get, the more I feel unworthy of his love and yet also so grateful and yet and able to embrace it. It's this weird thing of, of I feel more unworthy because I realize how broken I am, but then more loved because of the fact that I'm so broken and yet he wants to use me. It's just crazy. The cra it's crazy to be even on this podcast, to, to be invited to speak. I feel like I'm completely disqualified because of the things that I've done. And yet I know that God has qualified me because he's reconciled me. Um, he's reconciled me in Christ. I am now a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come and is still coming. And so it's just made the gospel real to me that I, that I can live as myself that God loves me the way I am, but too much to let me stay the way I am. <laughs> you know? My husband says that all the time. Yeah. 
We can start shouting now, right, Mr. Yes. Mr. So Amen. much to be excited for. I mean, how do you yeah. not just jump up and down, at least in your heart and mind? I know I say that all the time. We have morning meetings every morning for our uh, mm-hmm. staff at North Star, and we're studying through the Book of Romans. So we are deep in that. And it's Very just celebration. Day. I mean, every yeah. day, look at what Jesus has done for me, the mercy yeah. that he has on everybody, and then the grace that he has uh, for those have have, you know, given their life. We just experience the grace every day in Jesus. So hallelujah. Mm-hmm. We cannot wait to celebrate during C and um, just see all that God is going to do um, through you. So thank you for being faithful, um, faithful thank to you. Jesus and just to answering that call and spending time with us today and um, for what's coming. And Mr. Hester, so excited to see what's coming. Um, yes. Any Anything you want to uh say to the students yeah i would just say north star students we want to see you at the c event because it's going to be awesome mm-hmm. it's going to be different because we always change things up a little bit so we we try not to just you know repeat things over and over we try to you know do a few things here and there to add some some freshness to it and so um come ready with an open heart um if you have any questions about uh, C or, or anything connected to how to be part of this, feel free to reach out to, to me, reach out to Ms. Schaefer, or any of our North Star faculty or staff will be glad to help you, uh, you know, get all the details. Parents, uh, emails will be coming out soon that will include things like a bio of our speaker and also, um, you know, details about the week, times, meetings, all of that. But we are just really excited for this special week of ministry. I believe that the Lord has really led us in putting it together. And so with that in mind, that means that there is purpose and there is a reason. So I hope you can make it. If you can't make it all five days, come to four. If you can't make it to four, come to three. Just just do your best to get there because I think it's going to be a powerful, powerful week of ministry together. And we've got another special guest, uh, Tony Memo, that we're super excited about. He's going to share his testimony and just Uh, you will be able to see the handprint of God all over his life and who his identity is in. And um, yeah, just really excited about that. And just for those that might be listening, um, Mr. Hester, for parents that might be seeking a place for their kids, uh, maybe someone's listening right now, a parent got this and um, they don't even know how they're here, but they want to know what is it like? What will my student experience? Um, What kind of connection is my student going to experience if they came to North Star Academy? Absolutely. Well, I can tell you two real life examples that I've heard in the last two weeks. Um, One of them was when I was meeting um, Mr. Deach and I lead a group of high school guys on Monday nights. It's just a community group, discipleship group. And many of those guys have expressed that it's one of their favorite moments in the week because they feel such a community and such a connectedness with one another and with God that one, one young man in our group said, it's so cool that when I ask you guys to pray, not only do you pray, but you also ask me later to give you an update on what happened. And you ask me what happened with the prayer. And so, so I love that. I think that's a great testimony of North Star's um, community uh, that we have. In addition, I spoke with a parent this week who shared in a meeting just how grateful she was for um, staff members that have been involved in, in her son's life and kind of helping him through a very difficult season that he's been in. And, and so all of that to say, I think those are just small glimpses of the bigger picture, which is um, North Star is true to its motto, real people, real places, real ministry, that we are together. And even though we are connecting most often on screens, that um, that 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 has in no way sacrificed the community that we have together. So if you are a parent or a, a student out there listening and you're not currently a North Star student or family, but you think, you know, what would this be a good place for our student? I would really encourage you to check us out. Um, we have lots of faculty and staff that would love to talk to you and hear more about or hear more about your personal family needs and situations, but also um, to tell you a little bit about some of the great things that God is doing here. We would love to partner with you and, and be part of that process of education, uh, Christian education that, that this school is doing a great job of offering. Yeah, praise God. Um, we're heading into our 25th year too. So big celebration coming two and a half decades. We've been doing this and um, yeah, we have connection. I know some people can't understand, but we have incredible connection um, and all kinds of technology tools that God has laid at our fingertips. So praise him for that. Thank you to both of you for joining um, today. And um, we are just super excited to see what God's going to do. So join us, make sure you join us for C March 
7th to the 11th? 11. And you can remember that because 7-Eleven, most of us know that chain of stores called 7-Eleven. So that'll get the number in our mind. Now, just imagine yourself marching there, March 7th through 11th, and you will see <laughs> what is in that store when you get there. That's the way to remember it. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Zach, so much. We're so excited. Thank you. It's an honor. Thank you.